morning. Dr. Lecter, my name is Clarice Starling. May I speak with you? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the most well-made and culturally significant movies to take home the Oscar for Best Picture. We're not necessarily saying these are the best movies ever made, but rather that they represent the most notable instances in which the Academy made the right call. I'm gonna make them an offer he can't refuse. Number 20, Everything Everywhere All at Once. The first science fiction film to win Best Picture, Everything Everywhere All at Once may also be the most surreal and inventive movie to score big with Academy. They don't know you and I are in this universe yet, so hopefully I'll have some time to explain. I'm not your husband, and he's not the one you know. I'm another version of him from another life path, another universe. I'm here because we need your help. And we certainly can't limit its landmark success to one genre either. It's a multiversal adventure that's just as indebted to fantasy, absurdist comedy, and martial arts cinema as well. All the while, it probes the viewer with deep, existential questions about life, identity, and trauma. What is the truth? Nothing matters. Oh, Joy. Don't believe that. A less progressive voting body may have been turned off by its overwhelming assortment of genre thrills, but with a top-notch cast led by the incomparable Michelle Yeoh and a heartfelt message to top everything off, it's that very mixture that makes it so hard to resist. Number 19, The Departed. We all know Martin Scorsese could make a masterpiece in his sleep. In fact, he's crafted so many legendary works that we still can't believe this was the one that finally nabbed him that Oscar. You want to serve the Commonwealth, this is your chance. We need you, pal. You've already pretended to be a Costigan from South Boston. Every weekend, Sergeant. Perfect. With its interconnected story providing depth to both the Boston police and Irish mob as they search for the spies in each other's organization, it's an experience that constantly leaves you wondering who you can trust. In typical Scorsese fashion, the intensity ratches up as the line between justice and corruption becomes razor thin. Get the cops to look at Jimmy Pappas for the hit. Of course, he had nothing to do with it. They'll say so. You look in his car, you'll find the gun that did it registered official, Providence. In the trunk of the glove compartment. With an ensemble of A-listers doing much of the heavy lifting, The Departed stands tall as one of Marty's most absorbing and rewatchable films, and one that earned its gold statuette completely off its own merits. Number 18, Titanic. Few films have managed to capture the public's attention the way this one did, and even fewer have sailed their box office success all the way to 11 Oscar wins. I'm the king of the world! It's hard to imagine there was a time when James Cameron's historical epic was expected to be a flop. As he usually does, Cameron kept things afloat, pun intended, proving his naysayers wrong with his unrivaled ambition and painstaking attention to detail. Titanic remains one of modern cinema's grandest achievements, complete with a timeless romance that will have you swooning and sobbing in equal measure. I promise, never let go. I will never let go, Jack. What else can we say? Rose never let go, and neither have we. Number 17, Gone with the Wind. While there's plenty about this film's portrayal of race relations and the Civil War that hasn't aged particularly well, it's nearly impossible to deprive Gone with the Wind of its magnitude. No, I'm not hinting. I'm saying very plainly that the Yankees are better equipped than we. They've got factories, shipyards, coal mines, and a fleet to bottle up our harbors and starve us to death. All we've got is cotton and slaves and... Arrogant. To watch it today is to appreciate a type of go-for-broke filmmaking rarely seen nowadays. Despite its imposing runtime, it capitalizes on every moment as Scarlett O'Hara navigates love and loss while the South falls apart around her. It's still incredible that things came together the way they did, while the medium of the film was still coming into its own. 85 years removed from its release, its revisionist take on history is hard to ignore. Where shall I go? What shall I do? Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. But its extravagant set design, sweeping musical score, and commanding use of Technicolor are still marvels to behold. Number 16, The Bridge on the River Kwai. British filmmaker David Lean only painted in bold strokes, and this tale of British POWs during World War II remains one of his finest achievements. You will finish the bridge by the 12th day of May. You will walk under the direction of a Japanese engineer. Tasked with building a bridge to appease their Japanese captors, the central cohort of soldiers grapple with their integrity as a plot forms to destroy their creation. Led by Sir Alec Guinness as their conflicted colonel, the bridge on the River Kwai is a triumph of the human spirit, but it's also a fascinating meditation on how patriotism can compromise one's beliefs. He's gone mad. 
He's leading them right to it. Our own man. It's a universal idea made all the more poignant by its wartime setting. It wouldn't be the last time the Academy recognized Lean's vision, and it won't be the last time we see him on this list either. Number 15, No Country for Old Men. Far removed from the irreverent comedies they had built their name off of, Joel and Ethan Cohen took a tonal gamble on this neo-western while still operating in familiar territory. What's in the satchel? It's full of money. That'll be the day. And boy, did it pay off. It's another tale of a crime gone wrong, and the innocent people who pay the price. But, the Coens replaced their trademark dark humor with unflinching tension and brutal honesty as Llewellyn Moss flees from monstrous hitman Anton Chigurh, played to horrifying perfection by Javier Bardem. I didn't put nothing up. Yes, you did. You've been putting it up your whole life, you just didn't know it. You know what date is on this coin? No. 1958. It's been traveling 22 years to get here, and now it's here. No Country for Old Men matches its best-selling source material for sheer cold-heartedness in a quiet but deadly game of cat and mouse taken to its absolute limit. It completely transcends its Western setting by working as a profound treatise on fate, mortality, and inevitability. Number 14, Parasite. It's fitting for a movie that defies categorization to defy the odds in the best possible way. Aside from its unprecedented status as the first non-English language Best Picture winner, Parasite is also one of the best satires of the 21st century. It starts out devilishly enough as a hilarious takedown of the uber-rich that sees a poor family worm their way into the employment of a wealthy one, but director Bon Joon-ho saves an even greater sleight of hand for everything that follows, refashioning the story into a dramatic thriller of the highest order. Parasite never loses its satirical edge as it jumps from one genre to another, and the observations it makes about inequality will no doubt remain relevant regardless of geography. Number 13, West Side Story. The 1960s sure was a great time to be a musical at the Oscars, as the genre produced several Best Picture champions throughout the decade. Maria, I just kissed a girl named Maria. And suddenly I found how wonderful a sound can be. The sound of music will always be one of our favorite things, but West Side Story remains the true standout of the bunch. Making a seamless transition from stage to screen, this modernized Romeo and Juliet comes to life with cinematic gusto through ingenious camera work and some of the most dazzling choreography ever put to film. Even more impressive is its balancing of energetic musical sequences with somber themes. Legendary numbers like America and G. Officer Krupke inform as much as they entertain, and the film's willingness to embrace the story's social conscience has made it a game changer. G. Officer Krupke were very upset. We never had the love that every child ought to get. Number 12, Moonlight. So much was made of the fiasco surrounding Moonlight's Best Picture win that you'd think it'd be hard to remember why the movie deserved the award. At some point, you gotta decide for yourself who you want. Can't let nobody make that decision for you. But from the first frame onward, director Barry Jenkins ensures that's not the case. With its entrancing color palette and incredible performances, it's impossible to forget Chiron's intimate journey to discovering who he is and the difficult truths he's forced to confront along the way. It's a story that respects the audience enough to keep its emotions close to the chest without ever bottling them up. You don't know me. I don't know you. Just as the protagonist searches for meaning in a world he doesn't believe will accept him, so too did Moonlight come along before many people knew how much they needed it. Number 11, Amadeus. If there's a more lavish and finely tailored costume drama ever honored by the Academy, we haven't seen it. And there's plenty of substance beneath all the style too. That doesn't really work, does it? Did you try? Shouldn't it be a bit more? Or this. This. Yes. Though it weaves together a heavily fictionalized story, don't let Amadeus' historical liberties deter you from appreciating its compelling exploration of faith, 
talent, and jealousy in 18th century Vienna. As Mozart and Antonio Salieri respectively, Tom Hulse and F. Murray Abraham were both relative newcomers at the time, leaving enough room for us to buy into the former's brilliance and the latter's resentment of him. Why well, choose Mozart to teach me lessons in humility? My heart was filling up with such hatred for that little man. The towering performances of its two leads are only part of the equation, as the richly detailed production also makes use of real locations where Mozart actually debuted his operas. Number 10, The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King. Before superheroes dominated the cultural landscape, Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings trilogy represented all that was great about blockbuster film franchises. A day may come when the courage of men fails, when we forsake our friends and break all bonds of fellowship. But it is not this day and the Academy seemed to agree, as the final installment pulled off the biggest sweep in Oscar history, taking home all 11 awards it was nominated for. It's easy to see why, as The Return of the King is both an emotionally satisfying payoff and a monumental achievement in its own right. Fantasy doesn't get better than this, as there's not much that compares to The Fellowship's final stand against Sauron and the evils of the One Ring. Its success was more than indicative of how much voters had come to love the entire trilogy, and we wouldn't have it any other way. Number 9, The Apartment. Rom-coms don't often get their due at the Oscars, but exceptions have been made. Chief among them is this workplace dramedy. Couldn't happen to a nicer guy. You know, you're the only one around here who ever takes his hat off in the elevator. Really? The characters you meet. Something happens to men in elevators. Must be the change of altitude. The blood rushes to their head or something. Jack Lemmon plays a low-level clerk using his apartment as a haven for his superior's affairs in order to get promoted, while Shirley MacLaine is the lift operator who catches the eye of his sleazy boss. A happy ending is far from guaranteed, as the apartment knows precisely how to balance even its most wholesome moments with the frustrating realities of working-class life. Writer-director Billy Wilder was already an Academy darling, having been honored for both Sunset Boulevard and fellow Best Picture winner The Lost Weekend. Yet, the fiery attraction and bittersweet exchanges between Lemon and McLean is truly something to admire. What's a tennis racket doing in the kitchen? Tennis racket? Oh, I remember. I was cooking myself an Italian dinner. I used it to strain the spaghetti. Why not? Number 8, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. It's one thing to beat out all-time classics like Jaws and Dog Day Afternoon for the Academy's top honor. It's another thing entirely to still be the right choice years after the fact. I'm here to cooperate with you 100%. 100%. I'll be just right down the line with you. You watch. Because I think we ought to get to the bottom of uh, R.P. McMurphy. A stirring tribute to individualism and a scathing critique of institutionalization, this 1975 drama follows career criminal McMurphy as he dodges prison by serving time in a psychiatric hospital. But his rebellious ways soon find a worthy opponent in the tyrannical nurse Ratchet, who's far more concerned with keeping her patients in line than getting them back on their feet. I would like to know about our cigarettes. May I have my cigarettes, please, Miss Ratchet? You sit down, Mr. Cheswick, and wait your turn. Go ahead, sit down. Led by Jack Nicholson's signature performance, the film's progressive attitude toward resisting authority and the value of free will catapulted it to a rare sweep of the five major Oscar categories. Number 7, On the Waterfront. This Ilya Kazan masterpiece wouldn't work without its political underpinnings, but that's part of the reason why it has stood the test of time. Hey, you got a real friend here. And don't forget it. Why should you forget it? Yeah. Thanks, Johnny. When the director's controversial decision to testify before the government during the Red Scare threatened his credibility, On the Waterfront cemented itself as an explanation for his actions. It follows a down-and-out dockhand who faces pressure to expose the misdeeds of a local union boss, even though doing so would mean hurting his family. I don't know nothing. I ain't seen nothing. I'm not saying nothing. I want you and your girlfriend to just take off. All right, Mr. Law, you have every right not to talk if that's what you choose to do. The public has a right to know the facts, too, you yeah. know. Yeah. Marlon Brando's Oscar-winning performance helped legitimize the practice of method acting, laying bare the conviction required to do the right thing and the guilt that still remains afterward. Kazan never managed to elude criticism, but the heroism portrayed on screen will always be something to celebrate. Number 6, All About Eve. Classic Hollywood was the age of the movie star, and Betty Davis was one of the brightest of them all. Of all the women in the world with nothing to complain about, ain't it the truth? Yes, it is. You're talented, famous, wealthy, 
people waiting around night after night just to see you, even in the wind and the rain. But as the 1950s ushered in a new age of thespian and complicated social issues, Davis put forth some of her most prescient work in All About Eve, detailing the fall of an egotistical actress whose life is taken over by an ambitious up-and-comer. There's enough star power for the film to be just another vanity project, but the mature performances, clever writing, and careful direction of Joseph Mankiewicz elevate the film into an indictment of the entertainment industry and the vainness of stardom. Do you want some day to have an award like that of your own? More than anything else in the world. Then you must ask Miss Harrington how to get one. Miss Harrington knows all about it. The material was fairly cutting edge for its time and remains a must watch for anyone considering a career in the arts. Number 5, The Silence of the Lambs. To the chagrin of many, horror continues to be an underrepresented genre at the Oscars, but every now and then, something comes along that not even the Academy can ignore. I'm here to learn from you. Maybe you can decide for yourself whether or not I'm qualified enough to do that. Mm -hmm. That is rather slippery of you, Agent Starling. For good reason, The Silence of the Lambs was the genre's first Best Picture representee, and also the last film to take home the Big Five awards. Ask anyone, that's a testament to how well it fuses a crime procedural with psychological dread. All good things to those who wait. I've waited, Clarice, but how long can you and old Jackie boy wait? Our little Billy must already be searching for that next special lady. At its core, it's a tensely written mystery about crimes that remain all too relevant. Throw in a pair of career-defining performances from Jodie Foster as FBI rookie Clary Starling and Anthony Hopkins as the calculating Hannibal Lecter, and you really can't go wrong. That is, if you don't close your eyes first. Number 4. Lawrence of Arabia Remember when we said David Lean was known for his big and bold style of filmmaking? Well, let's just say he truly outdid himself with this historical epic, which is widely considered one of the greatest ever made. No, Dryden. It's going to be fun. It is recognized that you have a funny sense of fun. Centered around T.E. Lawrence's exploits in the Ottoman Empire during World War I, it's a complex character study that's able to make earnest statements about war and violence in even its quietest moments. But with three and a half hours at their disposal, Lean and star Peter O'Toole put on a masterclass of grandiose storytelling that perfectly encapsulates the title character's theatricality. No prisoners! No prisoners! There may not be a movie as visually enthralling as this one, and those never-ending deserts have to be seen on the biggest screen possible. Number 3. Schindler's List There's a reality where Steven Spielberg never found the courage to bring the story of Oscar Schindler to the big screen. They wouldn't own it. I'd own it. I'd pay them back in product. Pots and pans. Pots and pans. Something they can use. Something they can feel on their hands, they can trade it on the black market, do whatever they want, everybody's happy. We're just glad it's not this one, as our understanding of what movies can accomplish would never be the same after Schindler's List was released. Following the German entrepreneur as he works to rescue hundreds of Jews during the Holocaust, it's a haunting examination of humanity at its absolute lowest point. It's one of the most devastating and thematically complex films you're likely to ever watch, but also one of the most hopeful. The list is an absolute good. The list is life. Spielberg's subsequent wins for Best Director and Best Picture were no-brainers, but his accomplishments, like Schindler's, are just as much a cause for reflection and remembrance as they are celebration. Number 2. Casablanca Is it any wonder this movie appears a whopping six times on the American Film Institute's list of the 100 greatest movie quotes? Of all the gin joints in all the towns in all the world, she walks into mine. You can't get attached to such memorable lines without memorable characters to speak them, and Casablanca has some of the most indelible characters in movie history. While it will be forever linked to World War II both on screen and off, the romance between Humphrey Bogart and Ingrid Bergman, and the difficult choices their characters must make, has never been bound by time or space. You're not with him, you'll regret it. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but soon and for the rest of your life. But what about us? We'll always have Paris. Over 80 years later, Rick and Elsa's brief time together remains an immortal depiction of what it means to stand up for what is right, even when it means sacrificing your own happiness. He's looking at you, kid. Here's looking at you indeed. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Ben-Hur. This Swords and Sandals epic was the first to win 11 statuettes. You're a condemned man, why didn't you? I'm not ready to die. What do you think will save you? The God of my fathers. 
Your god has forsaken you. He has no more power than the images I pray to. The Deer Hunter, an ambitious, emotionally draining study of war fueled by devastating performances. Gotta learn, Stanley. Every time you come up here, you got your goddamn head up your ass. Maybe he likes the view from up there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Every time he comes up, he's got no knife, he's got no jacket, he's got no pants, he's got no boots. Annie Hall, the modern rom-com would be nothing without it. Would you like a lift? <laughs> Sure. Which way are you going? Me? Um, downtown. Da I'm, go I'm, I'm going uptown. Oh, well, you know, I'm going uptown, too. No, wait a minute. You just said you were going downtown. Yeah, well, um, but I can... Oh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can go uptown, too. I live uptown, but uh, what the hell? I mean, it'd be nice having company. The best years of our lives. This was a powerful portrayal of PTSD before many understood it. You want to see how the hooks work? You want to see the freak? Unforgiven. This Clint Eastwood tour de force is smarter than your average Western. Kill just about everything that walks or crawls at one time or another. And I'm here to kill you, little Bill. For what you did to Ned. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Godfather There was a time before The Godfather, and a time after it. We like to think we're still living in the latter, as the unparalleled impact of Francis Ford Coppola's masterpiece has rippled throughout popular culture for decades. Now you come to me and you say, Don Corleone, give me justice. But you don't ask for respect. You don't offer friendship. You don't even think to call me Godfather. Even with its unforgettable imagery, iconic dialogue, and brooding score, what truly solidifies it as an all-time great is the complex family dynamic at its core. Michael Corleone's ascension from well-meaning veteran to ruthless crime lord is the stuff of legend. Fredo, you're my older brother, and I love you. But don't ever take sides with anyone against the family again. Ever. It's perhaps cinema's greatest portrayal of family loyalty and the American dream in all of its dark depravity. Simply put, any chance to revisit The Godfather and its 1974 sequel, which incredibly also won Best Picture, is an offer we simply can't refuse. What movie do you think deserved its Best Picture win the most? Let us know in the comments. Wait a minute, why can't it's I give my opinion? Happening. It's a free country. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.